This place is going to be the new Z motor mounting um, on the Denford Easy Mill. So this is the motor that's going in the knee rather than the original setup that um, operated the quill. And I need to needed to have a hole through the center, clearance for the shaft, and I want a counterbore um, on it to um, accommodate the register on the motor. And couldn't get this set up in the fore jaw. The jaws would have um, extended to the point where they interfered with the bed. Um, so instead I'm going to use the automatic boring facing head to perform the counter bore. So um, I went through with a rotor brooch and uh, took out a slug and then I came through and I cleaned up the bore, measured the bore size and then I measured, or rather, um, taking that dimension, subtracting it through, from the, um, the, the 73 millimeter diameter I need to end up at. Um, I took half of that and set the calipers to that dimension and measured the distance between the stop pin and the stop dog. So now I should be able to use the auto feed to take the facing cuts to create the counter bore and once the counter bore is created I'm then going to step it over um, in two directions um, to allow for motor adjustment. So the first thing I need to do is to establish a um, a Z zero. I'm going to come down very lightly and just touch off, set a zero on the quill readout, and now I'll actually engage the auto return and was just, and as was kindly pointed out to me the gap in the knurling indicates the position in which the return pin engages so we need the head running forwards again or rather oh. Try that again. I'd already reversed the direction. So we're now retracting the head with the other stop dog. That's tripped out. So I can come down to zero and we'll try half a millimetre, lock the quill, I might come down a little in speed and let's see if we can face out and then we'll see what uh, dimension we end up with. things down there to try and dial out the chatter.
this footage increases as the uh, diameter increases. tripped out. So let's see what uh, we get as a measurement. This is not a highly precise measurement, we just like it uh, decently close. I'm getting 73.48, um, which is um, going to give us half a millimetre clearance on the register, which is a lot closer than the original setup. Uh, I don't know if I'm tempted to dial it in any closer than that. I think I'll probably leave it as is. So we'll line up the return pin. Reset the head. It's one of the disadvantages of the setup on my VFD is it tends to run uh, backwards initially because you're still holding the start button down and of course with the, the head in back gear the motor needs to be running in reverse so in forwards direction it, it, it just does what it's supposed to in reverse for as long as you're holding down the start button it runs backwards so you need to just give a quick stab at the start button to get minimal backwards running got the feed engaged again Come down to a millimetre.
Okay, the finishing there doesn't look too terrible. This insert is the one that came with the, uh, the boring bar, so uh, at a future date I might try um, a known brand. So that's reset again. If you look at, look at the, um, the trip dogs, I can't get them any closer than this. Um, I could swap them side for side and get it set up, but I'm not going to do that now. Um, but that's as close as I can get them so it retracts further than it needs to. Next, another phone interruption. Fine feed, makes it easy to set the depth, so I'm at one and a half millimetres. Again, find the right position, reset the head. That's at two millimeters now which I think is the sufficient depth. So I'll zoom in for this final cut.
That doesn't look like uh, too bad a result at all.